the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the Twelfth Sunday in Ordinary Time, and in our first reading, the prophet Jeremiah opens his heart to God. To prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of our sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I hear so many disparaging me, terror from every side. Denounce him, let us denounce him. All those who used to be my friends 
watch for my downfall. Perhaps he will be seduced into error. Then we will master him and take our revenge. But the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. My opponents will stumble, mastered, confounded by their failure. Everlasting, unforgettable disgrace will be theirs. But you, O Lord of hosts, you who probe with justice, who scrutinise the loins and heart, let me see the vengeance you will take on them. For I have committed my cause to you. Sing to the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he has delivered the soul of the needy from the hands of evil men. The word of the Lord. In your great love, answer me, O Lord. In your great love, answer me, O Lord. It is for you that I suffer taunts, but shame covers my face. But I have become a stranger to my brothers, an alien to my own mother's sons. I burn with zeal for your house, and taunts against you fall on me. In your great love, answer me, O Lord. This is my prayer to you, my prayer for your favour. In your great love, answer me, O God, with your help that never fails. Lord, answer, for your love is kind. In your compassion, turn towards me. In your great love, answer me, O Lord. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God's seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chain. Let the heavens and the earth give him praise, the sea and all its living creatures. In your great love, answer me, O Lord. A reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Romans. Sin entered the world through one man, and through sin, death. And thus death has spread through the whole human race, because everyone has sinned. Sin existed in the world long before the law was given. There was no law, and so no one could be accused of the sin of law-breaking. Yet death reigned over all, from Adam to Moses, even though their sin, unlike that sin of Adam, was not a matter of breaking a law. Adam prefigured the one to come, but the gift itself 
considerably outweighed the fall. If it is certain that through one man's fall so many died, it is even more certain that divine grace coming from the one man, Jesus Christ, came to so many as an abundant free gift. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. and lived among us to all who did accept him he gave power to become children of God Alleluia Alleluia The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus instructed the twelve as follows. Do not be afraid, for everything that is now covered will be uncovered and everything now hidden will be made clear. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the daylight. What you hear in whispers, proclaim from the housetop. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather, who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? And yet not one falls to the ground, without your father knowing. Why, every hair on your head has been counted. So there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of men, I will declare myself for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. I must admit that I do smile inwardly every time I hear those reassuring words of Jesus, that every hair on your head will be counted. As you can see, I've hardly got any hair to count, so that wouldn't be difficult. Anyway, enough of me being follically challenged. Poor old Jeremiah, in today's first reading, 
had even greater problems. You see, he was called by God to preach a message. But unfortunately for him, that message was of an impending disaster. And unsurprisingly, no one wanted to hear it. Even his family and friends had turned against him. I can just see Jeremiah curled up on the ground, his hands over his head and face, while he's encircled by his accusers, all shouting at him, pointing the finger at him, and he has just about had enough. But then, in the midst of his despair, he realises that he is not alone. He says, but the Lord is at my side, a mighty hero. God is given many names in the Old Testament, But I must admit that a mighty hero is one of my favourite ones. I must have seen every superhero film in recent years. And yes, I do think the Marvel Cinematic Universe is better than the DC one. And in each story, even though it may be over the course of two films sometimes, our superhero eventually saves the day. At that realisation that God was indeed by his side, his mighty hero, Jeremiah was given the strength to continue on. I can just imagine him standing up from that curled up position to stand tall in front of his opponents to face them head on. There may be times in our lives that we may think we are all alone and everyone is surrounding us, accusing us, denouncing us. It's at moments like those that we can think about this reading and realise like Jeremiah did that God is at our side. He always has been at our side as our mighty hero. And hopefully that should give us the strength to carry on. But there should be one big difference between ourselves and Jeremiah. Jeremiah wanted to see God's vengeance taken on his opponents. And you can't blame him. After all, that's probably the most natural reaction. But as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we are called to act differently. Not to seek vengeance, but to show God's love. We proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him 
all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, we ask our Father to hear our prayers. We pray for the Church that in the new and different ways to communicate God's message, more people may respond. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all governments that they may cooperate with each other in finding a vaccine for the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for an end to racism and a greater understanding of each of us cultures, beliefs and religions. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are in despair at this moment in time. But like Jeremiah, they may see God as their mighty hero. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for ourselves, but as the lockdown restrictions ease, we may have a spirit of patience and understanding when we are faced with cues or delays. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for all those who have died, those whose anniversaries occur at this time, and for their families. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for our own intentions,
Lord, in your mercy. We ask Mary, our mother, to pray for us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, hear these and all our prayers. Help us to know and to do your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy. For you are the one God, living and true. 
existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are God, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them, we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image. Male and female you created them and entrusted the whole world to their care. So that in serving you alone, the Creator, they might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience they had lost your friendship, you did not abandon them to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, but in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful of heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live, no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. So at bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant.
For when the hour had come, for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, but gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ, to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Francis our Pope, Ralph our Bishop, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, all who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. 
there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Let us pray for the coming of God's kingdom, as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, but by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
So at this time, we can make an act of spiritual communion. We can invite Jesus into our lives and he will come. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, but what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.